Hi guys and welcome to Cultonomics. My name is Paul Hanley and today I'm going to be chatting to you about fiscal policy and the bond market. In this video we are going to look at the impact of expansionary fiscal policy on the bond market and on aggregate demand. So we have a range of models in place here. What we are looking at is the Keynesian cross initially and the Keynesian cross model has total expenditure on the y-axis and national income down here on the x-axis. The 45 degree line shows perfect symmetry between total spending and national income and we know that the actual spending diverges from this somewhat. So actual spending is made up of consumption plus investment plus government spending plus net exports and these are represented along the expenditure line here. The equilibrium point then shows us where the economy is at in terms of spending in the economy and national income and in this situation here we have an equilibrium point at E0 and Y0 and what we're going to look at is where we have expansionary fiscal policy in the form of government expenditure increasing. Now, if government spending increases, this is a part of the E curve here in the Keynesian cross. And what this shows is, it shows that expenditure in the economy uh, has an impact on the general expenditure. And we shifted upwards as follows with an increase represented for expansionary fiscal policy, so an increase represented here. We get a new equilibrium point, we start off at point A and we end up at point B in the economy and B shows that the increased expenditure in this economy here is having an impact in terms of total expenditure, E1, which has increased and it also has an impact on the national income level in the economy. So that has also risen to Y1 in this case here. So the initial increase in government spending, the expansionary fiscal policy, has increased even more than the initial spend because of the multiplier effect, which has increased national income by a higher level than the initial expansionary fiscal policy. Now, how do we model that in a real economy in terms of inflation and GDP growth? So if we move on to the right hand side here, we're looking at an aggregate demand and aggregate supply model. And in this case, aggregate demand is our downward sloping line here showing the negative relationship between inflation and GDP. Our upward sloping line is short run aggregate supply showing a positive relationship between inflation and GDP in the short run. We also have a long run uh, aggregate supply curve, which is independent of inflation and hence vertical. Between these and where they intersect, we have an equilibrium point. So this economy here is at its potential output level in the short run and in the long run. And we say here that the inflation rate is inflation one and GDP growth is, let's say, at five percent in the economy. So we have our equilibrium point here. Well, the Keynesian cross is after telling us that when the government spends additional money in the economy, that increases expenditure and national outcome, even to a greater degree. So how do we represent that? Well, we know that AD is made up of the same components as spending in the Keynesian cross. It is our C plus I plus G plus NX and if government spending increases as we showed over on the left hand side what we do is we increase aggregate demand in the economy so we shift aggregate demand over to the right we call that now AD1 showing a shift to the right we have a new equilibrium point which is point B over here in the short run and in the short run the inflation rate will rise in the economy due to the ex extra spending and at the same time the GDP growth rate will rise so GDP levels will rise and rise in this economy here now the increase in expenditure in the short run 
is probably due to ec uh, extra debt on the government's behalf. So how are they financing this government spending increase? They are financing it through bond issuance, government bonds on the uh, bond markets out there in the economy. The issuance of these bonds cause government debt to increase in the economy. Um, what they do is the issuance of bonds here impact on the bond market. So over in the bond market, we have the demand for bonds represented by investors and big uh, pension funds, etc. And we have the supply of bonds. The demand and supply in equilibrium will give you the price level for a bond in the market and it will also give you the quantity of them purchased, uh, demanded and supplied on that market. Now if the government extra expenditure is financed by the issue of bonds and governments go into debt, their national debt increases. Well, if they're issuing bonds, this means that the supply of bonds increase on the market. Now, if the supply of bonds increase, this is represented by a rightward shift of the supply curve in the bond market. So we go to S1 over here. We started off at equilibrium point A and the increase in bonds for the fiscal policy has increased the supply of bonds and we end up at equilibrium point B here, which means that the price of bonds has reduced. The quantity has increased because the government is issuing them to finance its fiscal expansion. And more importantly, as we said, the price of them has decreased on the market. So what impact does this have on the yield, the bond yield, the actual interest rate or return on bonds? Well, to see this, we take the example of prices decreasing and we'll say that the bonds issued are very simple bonds by the government. We'll say that they are 100 euro for one year. So there are a one year 100 euro bond being issued. Now, what we can say here is, and we'll just say generally for an example, in this bond market here, when they were issued uh, and after demand and supply ensued, maybe the price of them fell to 95. So the bond price fell to 95 on the market. Well, in that case there, the actual interest rate on the market is as follows. So we can work this out through looking at a formula. And the formula in this case here is, if you want to work out the yield on a bond in the economy, so the yield here, that's equal to the issue price for the bond, its face value initially, 100, minus the current purchase price of the bond, so we're after saying it's dropped to 95, and you divide that by the current purchase price of the bond. To get in percentage terms, we'll multiply by 100. So what we can say in the economy right now is that the yield, the price, the interest rate on a bond is 100 minus 95 divided by 95 and multiplied by 100. And this gives us 5.26%. So the current price on bonds, uh, the interest rate on bonds in the economy is 5.26%. So in our economy up here at the 95 purchase price, we are looking at 5.26 interest. So what has happened post the expansionary fiscal policy? Well, we know the price has reduced in this case here. So what we are going to say is that the price of the bond has reduced to 92 euro on the market because of expansionary fiscal policy. Now, the impact of this, well, if it reduces to 92 euro in this case here, what we are going to say is we can work out the yield post the expansionary fiscal policy. And the yield in this case is going to be the issue price again, 100. Now it's minus 92 based on the decrease in the price of it all divided by the 92, the current price, and multiplied by 100. Now, in this case here, if that reduces and we work through the values, what we work out is an interest rate of 8.70%. So what happens here is when the 
bond price reduces due to the issue of bonds by the government to finance expansionary fiscal policy. It reduces to 92 in this case. This increases the interest rate, the yield on bonds, from 5.26% to 8.70%. So the interest rate on bonds increases, hence making it more difficult for the government to pay back their debt. So the cost of borrowing increases for the government in this case here. So the cost of borrowing has gone up to 8.7%. So cost of borrowing increases. Over on the left hand side in the market for loanable funds up here, what we have is the supply of loanable funds based on saving in the economy and savings can be both private and public, so government and households. And we also have the demand for it here. So for loanable funds, we have the supply and demand. We have the real interest rate over on the left hand side and down here on the x-axis, we have the quantity of loanable funds. Okay, so for the market for loanable funds here, what has happened due to expansionary fiscal policy is, we started off with an equilibrium real interest rate in the economy, or one in this case here, and we also had our quantity of loanable funds, Q1 in this situation. Now, due to the expansionary fiscal policy of the government, what has happened in this case here is the the public savings has gone down. So these are the part of savings here that are government. So the public savings has reduced in order to finance this, defi uh, this deficit, expansionary fiscal policy. And in this case here, what happens is if savings reduce, the supply of loanable funds reduce. We show this with a supply curve shifting to the left. This produces a new equilibrium point which is R2 in the economy. And what this does is it increases the real interest rate. So not only is the cost of borrowing going up in the bond market, but also in the market for loanable funds for general uh, loans in the economy, this also pushes up the interest rate, causing the crowding out effect. So in both situations, it is one, crowding out private investment, and two, increasing the cost of borrowing for the government. I hope you call back to Cultnomics soon. Bye for now.